to live in a dream a victim of madness to be toy mindless of your fate a shaman of magic hopelessly I hesitated long before I put my theory to the test. But late to one accursed night, I compounded the elements, watched them boil and smoke together in the glass. And when the reaction had subsided, drank off the potion. The most racking pain succeeded. A grinding in the bones, deadly nausea. Then these agonies began to swiftly subside. And when I came to myself, as out of a great sickness, I was Edward Hyde. <laughs> Sit down, be quiet. I've given no one permission to leave yet. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Someone remove the screen. Hey. Young man, you shall be severely reprimanded for that. You know I abhor loud noises. Now remove that screen and get back to your seat immediately. Tonight, your assignment will be to read the last half of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. We may have a test over that material tomorrow, so be prepared. If any of you want to see the last half of the film, it will be shown at the meeting of the Literature Club in this classroom tomorrow night. I suggest most of you appear. <laughs> you people over there get back to your seats. I have your reports graded, and I'll ask Robin Jones to hand them back as you foul out. Now you're dismissed. Oh, I'd like to see Vernon Potts up at my desk, please. You want to see me, Miss Grindstaff? Vernon, what is the matter with you? I beg your pardon? 
I distinctly remember asking this class to turn in a report on Stevenson, which everyone did but you. Well, there must be a mistake. I'm sure I handed one in. I worked all weekend on it. Here's the paper you turned in, Vernon. <laughs> oh, well, there, you see. I knew I'd handed one in. Except that it's not a report on Stevenson. It's a biology report on guinea pigs. Oh, I can't understand it. It's got to be here somewhere. Here it is. I found it. Here it is, Miss Grindstaff. I must have given you my biology report by mistake. And now, yeah. But, Miss Grindstaff, it was only a mistake. And... I'm sorry, Vernon, but you must learn that your other subjects are just as important as biology and chemistry. Maybe after this, you'll remember. Biology report. I worked on it all summer. Thank you for handing out the papers, Robin. You may be excused. Calm down, Mums. Yeah. There we go. Calm down. Calm down. It's a oh, it's all right. Cat's gone. Yeah. Come on. Oh, it's all right. Yeah. What'd you do to my cat, boy? She went out of here scared to death. I, I just shoot her away, that's all. Just shoot her away, huh? But with this, now I'm warning you, boy. You stay away from my cat, you understand? Well, Mr. Griggs, you didn't see what she was doing. She was trying to get into this cage. That's the second time today. That's what she's for, boy. She kills rats in the building. He's not a rat. He's a guinea pig. And he's part of my biology project. I don't care about none of that. Now, I'm telling you, boy, you leave my cat alone, or there's going to be trouble between you and me. You understand, boy? Huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Let's go, boy. We'll go get something to eat. <laughs> Let's go. Dirty old. Yeah. What'd you say? Oh, n uh, nothing. I, I was just talking to Mr. Mumps. Yeah. Okay, boy, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. That Mr. Griggs is a mean old man, isn't he, Mumps? I bet if I'd have said the wrong thing, he would have hit me. Well, let me tell you some good news. Thank you. 
think I have all the correct properties isolated. And I'm not sure that the experiment's gonna work. But if you keep on cooperating with me, I think we'll know by tomorrow or the next day. Just think, we could be famous. I mean, if you're not too busy. Oh, oh, no, I'm not too busy. And sure, you can come in, Robin. How's Mr. Mumps doing? <laughs> not too well, really. The janitor's cat's been after him again. Here, you want to feed him? Oh, yeah. <gasps> oh, he won't bite. Uh, Vernon, I always wanted to ask you, why do you call him Mr. Mumps? Oh, because after he eats, he looks like he's got the mumps. <laughs> you know, he really does. <sighs> well, I guess I'd better be going. Um, I just stopped by to tell you that I'm... I'm sorry for the way Miss Grindstaff treated you in English today. Why did she give you an F? Jealousy. What? Jealousy. She was jealous because I spend more time on biology and science than on English. That's why she ripped up my report on Mr. Mumps. Oh, that's really unfair, Vernon. I know how hard you've worked on it. Oh, well, that's all right. I've still got my biology notes. Oh, that's good. Would you like to see something I'm working on? Uh, I'd really like to, Vernon. I've really but... clamped down on the formula. Well, well, you see, Roger's waiting for me. Oh, I don't blame him. Uh, well, thank you for coming by. I guess you and Mumps are the only friends I have. That's for sure. Robin, what are you doing up here with the creeper? Oh, well, Vernon was just showing me some of his projects. Thanks again, Vernon. I really appreciate it. Listen, creeper. From now on, play with your rats by yourself. shooting up for P.E. Well, I'd, I'd like to talk to you. Oh, he wants to talk to me for a minute. Okay, what about? Well, it's kind of personal. It's not personal. Come on, Potts, what do you want? I haven't got time to stand around here mealy mouth for you all day. Well, I was wondering if you'd sign this, this pass to excuse me from P.E. Let me again. see that. God, I think you broke my damn hand. You know, there's another pass to biology lab, Potts. Yes, sir. Well, it's the third one this week. Well, well, I'm not sure it's the third one this week. Well, just what are you doing up there? I mean, what could be more important than PE class? Well, well, I... Oh, come on, Potts. You're wasting my time. I haven't got all day. Uh-huh. Well, well yeah, I, I have this project where I... Well, you know how some drugs can change a person mentally? Well, I, I've been trying to prove that you can change a person physically as well. You see, I'm experimenting with this guinea pig. His name is Mr. Mumps. <laughs> Forget it, Potts. That's the silliest damn thing I've ever heard. Now, get out of here and get dressed. Can you believe that? That's ridiculous. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Go. Well, look who's here. What's the matter, Creeper? Couldn't get a pass to play with your spiders? 
<laughs> Guess you're gonna have to play with the big boys today, huh? Get that back. <laughs> <laughs> Get that back! Get that back! Yes, take it easy, Creeper. Everything will be all right, Creeper. You really dig this science stuff, don't you? You know, Robin says you're a real brain. But, uh, I'm getting a little tired of hearing her talk about you. Lately, that's all I hear. Vernon's so smart. Vernon's so intelligent. Vernon can do this. Vernon can do that. I'm sick of it, you creep. <laughs> I'm not through with you yet. You know, uh, this stuff doesn't make much sense, creeper. I don't think you need this page. <laughs> no, I can't see notes. But this one either. Hey. Oh, or this one either. Hey. Go get it, right? Hi, Mr. Mumps. Sorry I'm late. I didn't forget your supper. Well, look what I got for you. What happened? <gasps> formula. My God, the formula at work. Let me get you out of there. Me, Mr. Mumps. Vernon, I'm not gonna hurt ya. Some fresh tuna for you. Come on now. Where are you? Kitty. Where'd you go, kitty? Hey, kitty, kitty, kitty. Hey, kitty, kitty, kitty. Where are you, boy? Oh, come on now. I got some fresh tuna for you. Come on now. Where are you? Hmm.
Jesus, look at this cat. What are you doing here? with Mr. Mumps. He killed her, but... You killed her. You killed her. You beat Oh! Do it by a magnet. And drink it. No, no. Mr. Griggs, you don't know what you're doing. This, this stuff could kill me. If you don't drink that, I'm gonna break one of these bottles and cut your throat out. Now, drink it! No, please. Drink it! Take you to the police, boy. But before I do, I'm gonna make you wish you'd never seen my cat before. What's the matter with you? Hey, what's the matter with you? to the police. Come on, get on your feet. Now, I'm not going to tell you again. I'm just telling you, if you don't stay away from my cat, there's going to be trouble for me and me and me and me and me
Bernard? What are you doing? Uh, just finishing up. I thought you were supposed to have the experiments prepared for this morning's class. Bernard? What's the matter with you this morning? Did you just break something? No, sir. Well, come on over here and tell me what's bothering you, son. What's going on? What are you cleaning up there? I don't know, Mr. Henshaw. I really don't. Someone must have broken into the lab last night. There were bottles and test tubes splattered all over the floor. The place was a mess. Is anything missing? Just Mr. Mumps. Someone broke into his cage and he's gone. I don't know where to look or what to do or anything. Okay, I understand. You go ahead and set up for the class. I'll go to the principal's office and talk to Mr. Higgins. Yes, sir. Oh, Vernon, by any chance, have you seen Mr. Griggs? No, sir. I better check with him. Maybe he heard something last night. Let me have your attention for just a minute. Hey, you people quiet down and listen a minute. I just want to caution you in handling this particular experiment. If you should get acid on yourself, go immediately to the sink and wash it off. Just a minute. I'm not through. One other thing. When you get through using the reagent, put it in the disposal container. Do not put it back in the bottles and contaminate the contents. And don't pour it down the drain. <laughs> Hi, Vernon. Well, I think I made a mistake. Oh, yeah, it's the wrong color. <laughs> what did I do wrong? You'll have to take it and throw it out. Start again. This is an exam. Bring in the next one. Lieutenant Bozeman, this is Vernon Potts. Sit down, Mr. Potts. Uh, these officers and I with homicide. Of course, you know, we're trying to put together enough facts to determine exactly what happened to Mr. Griss. Maybe you can help us. Well, yes, sir, I'll try. Uh, you're Mr. Henshaw's assistant, is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, as a lab assistant, Vernon, I suppose you spend more time in the laboratory than an ordinary student. Is that right? Yes, sir, that's correct. I help prepare the experiments before Mr. Henshaw gets to class. Was Mr. Griggs in the habit of coming into the lab, or would there be any reason for him to uh, fool around with any of the equipment in there? No, sir, not that I know of. Did Mr. Griggs have a cat? Sir? When the coroner's men emptied the acid drum, they found the remains of a cat, in addition to Mr. Griggs. And what do you make of that, Bernard? Oh, yes. Well, now that you mention it, I think he did have a pet cat. Yes, he used to come into the lab every now and then. Maybe the cat it fell into the acid, and Mr. Griggs fell in trying to get him out. Yeah, it does seem that way, doesn't it? Did Mr. Henshaw and Mr. Griggs get along? 
Yes, sir. As far as I know, they did. You never saw them arguing or disagreeing? No, no, sir. Now, I know this may sound a little uh, melodramatic, Brennan, but do you know of anyone who might have wanted to get rid of Mr. Griggs? Oh, there's no one. As far as I know, everyone liked him very, very much. He was a nice man to me. Uh-huh. Just one more thing, Vernon, then you can go back to class. How'd you get that bruise? Oh, I had a fight in the locker room. Mm, I see. <laughs> What's the other boy look like? <laughs> Just as ugly as always. I didn't hit him. Why, Vernon? He would have hit me back harder. Oh, I see. I see. Oh, yeah, well, I noticed here in your school file that uh, your mother is deceased and your father travels, is that right? Oh, yes, sir, he's a salesman. Okay, Vernon, you're excused. Oh, uh, just one more thing, Vernon, and then you can go back to class. What do you really think happened to Mr. Griggs? Lieutenant, I'd be afraid to venture a guess. Student, your time is just about up. All right, class, time is up. Fold your papers and leave them on my desk as you leave. If you don't have the answers by now, you never will. about your fight with Roger. Oh. I, I'm really sorry, Vernon. I, I feel like it was partly my fault. Well, I hope you're not mad at me. I mean, I don't blame you if you are. Mm -hmm. You know, I told Roger that... that if he ever hurts you again, that he and I are through for good. You told Roger that? Because of me? <laughs> Vernon Potts. I'd like to talk with you a minute. Yes, ma'am. I've been looking over your test paper, and it looks as if you didn't do too well. As a matter of fact, your grades for the entire term aren't very high. You realize, of course, that without a credit in this class, you won't graduate. I've decided, however, to give you a chance to earn some extra credit. I shall expect to see you at all of the literature club meetings for the remainder of the semester. Uh, but, Miss Grindstaff, the literature club meets on Wednesday night. Very good, Vernon. <laughs> yes, ma'am, but you see, Wednesday nights, that's when I go to the library. It's the only time I have a ride. I'm sorry, Vernon, but you need the credit in this class if you want to graduate. Of course, it makes no difference to me, but I strongly suggest you be there. And please note, tonight is Wednesday night. All right. 
night, Susan. That's all for tonight. Someone's still in the building. Why are you trying to frighten me? Turn on that light and let me see you. Vern, if it really is you, please turn on the light so I can see you. No. Won't you let me see you? I've changed. I don't look the same. I don't think you'd like to see me. Why are you doing this? What do you want? I'll have you go out of school for this. I I'll see that you never graduate. You'll never get into college. You must learn that your other subjects are just as important as biology and chemistry. Maybe after this, you'll remember them. Oh, God's sake, what do you want? Ah! 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 Ah!
Twitter? Oh, Lieutenant. I, uh, I thought I saw you back there. Yeah, well, I just thought I'd stop in and take a look. Then you know what happened. Yeah. Well, it's all over school today. Yeah, I'm sure it is. I suppose parents are going to be pulling the kids out of school now until we find the killer, huh? Yeah. Uh, do you have any idea who it is? No. No, we don't. At least not yet, anyway. Oh, by the way, Vernon, there's just one item I want to ask you about. Yes, I understand sir. that you're raising a guinea pig. Uh, yes, sir. He's part of my biology project. You mind showing him to me? Oh, uh, I I'd like to, but he's he's gone. His cage was destroyed on the night that Mr. Griggs was killed. Well, then you noticed him missing when you were cleaning up the lab early the next morning. Is that right? Sir? Well, Mr. Henshaw told us you were in school quite early that day. Why was that? Oh, well, like now. I had a lot of apparatus to set up for a lab practical. I came in early to feed Mr. Munts. Mm, I see. Well, then I suppose you'd be interested in this, Vernon. Remember I told you that when the coroner went through the remains of Mr. Griggs, he also found the remains of his cat? We have the complete report now. And it shows another set of bones mixed in. A guinea pig. I thought you'd want to know. Well, I'd better get back. See you later. Yes, thank you, Lieutenant. I just wasn't feeling well for a minute. I've been working on an experiment. It seems to have gotten away from me, I think. Please try to be more careful, Vernon. Oh. You know, you could get hurt working in here all alone. Yes, got to be more careful. Something awful could happen. Mr. Mumps. He's dead. He was part of the experiment. That's why I've got to give it up. Oh, I'm really sorry, Vernon. It's okay. I'll, I'll find something else. I know. How would you like to help me work on my project? No, well, I guess you probably wouldn't. I would. Well, it's really kind of simple compared to the things you can do. No, I, I'd like to. Really, I would. <laughs> well, that's great. Hey, we could start tonight. Listen, I'll be babysitting, so uh, why don't you come by my house? Here, I'll write down the address. Oh, I know where you live. You do? I, I, I looked it up once. You don't mind, do you? <laughs> of course not. 
I even wrote your phone number down in my notebook. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll see you at eight. Oh. Well, what about Roger? Oh, uh, don't worry about him. He's going to be watching the football game films at the gym tonight. You sure it's all right? I'm sure. <laughs> See you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> You're late again. You know, PE class started 10 minutes ago, and everybody else is out in the gym. I'm sorry. I, I guess I got delayed in the lab. Delayed in the lab? Delayed in the lab? How many times have I heard that excuse? Pots, what am I going to do with you? You know, I could funk you alone for being late so many times, not to mention the fact that you're probably the worst physical specimen I've ever seen. If anybody needed this class, it's you. It's true, I'm not very athletic. Oh, that's the understatement of the year. Seems like the only thing you enjoy doing is going to the lab. Is that right? Yes, I suppose so. Well, how about if I made an arrangement that would make both of us happy? Sir? How would you like to have a pass to the lab every day for the rest of the year and never have to suit up for PE again? That'd be great. Yeah, I, I thought you'd like that. But now, if I do that for you, boy, I want you to do me a favor. Well, sure, Coach McCall. What is it? Well, you see, I've got a problem. In order to play football, you have to be passing in all your subjects. Yes, sir. Well, I have a star football player who's failing in chemistry. And the principal says if he fails the next test, well, he'll flunk the course. And that'll make him ineligible for football next fall. Pops, I just can't afford to lose him. I've got a chance for state. You know what I'm talking about? You want me to help your player pass the test? That's right. Who is it? Roger Davis. Roger? Uh, now, don't get excited. Oh, Roger hates my guts. Now, listen, he'll do what I say. He doesn't want to get kicked off the team. I don't know. He's not doing very well in chemistry. He never works the assignments. Hasn't read any of the material. The test is tomorrow. I can't possibly have him ready by then. Yeah, but there is another way. I don't see how. You mean cheat, don't you? Now, wait a minute. Don't get excited. All I want you to do is let him be able to see your paper. No, I can't do that. I can't do it. You're not going to do anything. Just make it so he can see your paper. <laughs> That's still cheating. Look, Potts, you don't have a choice. Remember, you've still got to take P.E. for the rest of the year. And I'll personally see to it that this class becomes a living hell for you. Let's do it this way. Why don't you think about it for a while? Now, I'll be at the gym tonight watching films with a team. Why don't you give me a call, say, about 10 o'clock and give me your answer? What do you say? Yes, sir, that'd be fine. Good, then I'll expect you to call. And don't disappoint me, boy. I mean it. And one other thing. Don't tell anyone about our plan. Oh, no, sir. I wouldn't tell a living soul.
Then your chart will come down like this to the next group, which is the vertebrate class of mammals. From there, you go to the class called primates. Now, in that class, you find Homo sapiens. Human. Man. Well, what's the difference? Well, human is the term given to man who had achieved a higher level of intelligence, uh, which enabled him to make tools. <laughs> Homo sapien man goes back much further, back to a time when his emotions were more beast than human. Like the beast, he was ruled by bestial emotion. <laughs> uh, fear, hunger, pain. And he would kill other beasts, and even his own kind, without remorse. It wasn't until man became human that he could differentiate between good and evil. Well, I'm certainly glad he finally decided to become human. Are you? Human are the only animal that has the capability to choose between good and evil. Yet he will deliberately pick evil. Not everyone's like that, Vernon. You're certainly not like that. You're one of the kindest people I've ever met. I guess that's why I think so much of you. You're very human. It's 9.30, I've got to go. Vernon, wait, did I do something wrong? No, no uh, Robin, you've never done anything wrong. In, in fact, you're the first girl I've ever kissed. Well, then why are you leaving so suddenly? Well, I've got a big test in chemistry tomorrow. I've got to prepare for it. But you know that stuff backwards and forwards. Why are you so worried? Well, different kind of test. This one's going to take special preparation. That you? So what the hell's going on here? Get that light out of my eyes. What are you doing here? I work here. I'm Coach McCall. Who are you coaching this late at night? Hey, get the light out of my eyes. Let him go. Come out in the light. I, I want to know what the hell you guys are you think doing. Me. There's a maniac running loose around here, and two people, two people dead already. Now I find you sneaking around here. Right now, that makes you prime suspect. So don't give me any crap. You gonna book him? I don't know. You mean to tie him up? Will you let me handle this? 
Now look, Coach McCall. Just tell us what you're doing here, okay? Hey, I was just up here watching films with the football team. Everybody's been gone for almost an hour. Well, somebody's got to lock up. It takes you an hour to lock up? Well, I'm in no hurry. There's nobody around here after 10 o'clock anyway. Who are you calling to in the gym? What? Um, you thought I was somebody else. Well, I thought I heard footsteps in the gym. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. You called somebody's name. It sounded like Vernon. Is that what you said? I don't know. I might have said Vernon. Uh, I just thought I heard one of the boys in the gym. Uh, what does it matter? Everything matters to me, Coach McCall. Now, are you through in here? Hey, all I got to do is lock up the gym, close my office, and I'm finished. Good. Do it and get out! Well, I'm going to tell on you. I'm, I'm going to tell the principal the first thing in the morning. You do that, coach. Okay, Lieutenant, you can come out now. I'm leaving. Come on, quit playing games. Let's go. I want to lock them and go home. Vernon? Vernon? Are you in here? decided to leave. I almost gave you up. Why didn't you call? I decided to come in person. Well, it's a good thing you did. That's quit fooling around. All you had to do is tell me that you'll... sound you're making. What are you, what are you trying to do anyway? Look, Potts, maybe we can forget about the whole thing. What's the matter with you? 
Don't make me do something we're both going to regret. Believe you me, I'll personally see to it that this course becomes a living hell for you. Take off, he's got to be close. You stay here. Prime suspect. Good morning, Vernon. Oh, hello, Lieutenant Bozeman. We had another murder last night. Did you hear about it? Yeah, I heard about it this morning on the radio. Then I suppose you also know we have a suspect in custody. Well, it said something to that effect, but uh, it didn't say who it was. Well, we couldn't verify his identification until this morning. It's no secret, though. The person's name is Roger Davis. Who? Wasn't he the fellow that you had a fight with? Well, yeah. I don't know how I'd comment on that. Old Roger, huh? We caught him right after the killing. Looks like he's the one, all right. Wow. Oh, uh, oh, Vernon, just a moment. You know, that's very interesting. What's that? Uh, that bag you're carrying there, is that for the cleaners? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna drop it off before school. You know, that's the same cleaners my wife uses. In fact, my sister worked there. Yeah, well, I really have to be going. Yeah, of course. Well, I don't mean to hold you up, Brennan, and waste of time. You know, me and the boys, we were just driving around, kind of relaxing from catching that Roger Davis fellow, you know. But look, you better be getting along. Hey, hey, I'll tell you what. Why don't you let us drop that off at the penis place? It's at several blocks on the other side. Save us some time. Oh, no, really, I have plenty of time. You know, it's the only time I get to see her. She and the wife don't get along too well. You know? Hey, really, it won't be any trouble at all. Uh, no, I, I really do have the time. And besides, Coach McCall used to always tell me that I needed the exercise. So, uh, thank you anyway. You know, funny you should mention that. I could have sworn I heard the coach call all your name last night. My name? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. About an hour before he died. What do you make of that? I don't know. Are you sure? Well, pretty sure. Of course, it's hard to make out anything, though, in that hollow gymnasium. I can't understand it. Why would he be calling me? Well, that's what I thought. But what do you make of this? Uh, well, I make that out to be a laboratory beaker. Well, I've really got to be going, Lieutenant. We found it close to the coach's body. Fingerprints were all smudged. But wouldn't you say that's a strange place for a laboratory beaker? I mean, in your opinion, as a, a lab assistant. Well, yes, I would. Well, uh, wouldn't that mean that whoever killed Coach McCall was the same person that killed Miss Grindstaff and Mr. Griggs? You know something, Vernon? 
I believe you're right. I suppose that does mean that. Say, where are you going? To school, Lieutenant. You've got your killer and I've got classes to attend. Coach McCall's dead. That's right. And they're holding Roger Davis for his murder. Well, it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. Well, what if he's guilty? He'll lock him up for at least 20 years. No. I mean, I mean if he's guilty, I've been going with the murderer. Just think of all the times I've been alone with him. One of those victims could have been me. Don't think about it. He's locked up in a safe place. There won't be any more murders now. Listen, I've got an idea. Now, since there's no school tomorrow, why don't we go to the park and listen to the symphony? Have you ever been? No, but it sounds great. Oh, it is. <laughs> Something wrong? I can't believe it's you. You've changed. What? No, silly. I mean, you act different. A few days ago, you were so shy. You would never have asked me out. Well, I had some problems then. But now I'm rid of them. But like you said, I have changed. Will you go with me? <laughs> See you at 7.30. Roger, what do you want? I thought you were... In jail? Yeah, I was. They had to let me out, though. Uh, not enough evidence. Say, listen, uh, how about you and me getting together for a little talk tonight? I can't. I've got a date. Yeah, I can guess who with. I think you better call her and tell her something else came up. Why should I? Why don't you tell the police? That's what I want to talk to you about, Creeper. Creeper? I'm still here. Well... Where do we meet? You name it. In an hour. At the school. There's a window I leave open in the lab. You can get in there. Okay, see you in an hour. Partner.
are you doing Martha, here? Martha, got you. Was that you coming in the window? Yes, you've got to get out of here. It's a trap. How do you know? Roger told me. Right after you broke our date, he called and told me that, that you had killed Coach McCall and the others. He's gone crazy. He's setting a trap for you, Vernon. Setting a trap for me? They've let him out. He's coming here. Come on, Vernon, you've got to get out of here. D don't you understand? He's going to kill you, too. Vernon, my God, he's a killer! No, he's not. I am. What? I'm the killer. I'm the one who killed all those people. I don't believe you. Why not? They all deserved what they got, didn't they? But you couldn't do it. Sure I could. Sure I could, Robin. And after tonight, I won't be bothered by Roger either. Vernon, you're frightening me when you talk like that. All my life, I've been bothered and pushed around by the Rogers. Well, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Now they're afraid of me. Oh, Robin. Robin. I, I can't stop. Robin. I'm sorry you had to find out. <laughs>
Can't you? 